Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing breathing. Nobody's doing sounds. Sounds are simply happening. Hearing sounds are happening. The illusion is that you're hearing them. But there's someone here sitting here on a seat. And that, that someone, that individual is hearing sounds happening. All of it is simply being, aliveness. Aliveness is a happening. And in that aliveness arises the idea that there is someone. The idea, I am a person, arises. That's absolutely perfect. It's fine. It's the game. It's not right or wrong. It's what happens. And when the individual arises, ownership happens. The idea, this is happening to me, I am the one that's breathing, I am the one that's hearing the sounds. I am the individual, I am the separate individual to whom life is happening. And in order to make me feel more comfortable, I, I need to control that life, I need to find pleasure and avoid pain. That's the game, it's perfect, it's absolutely fine, it's aliveness happening, it's being, being. It's being, being a pretend person. It's oneness being two, pretending to be two. It's the game. But in that separation there's a sense of loss, there's a sense of something that isn't whole. Often in, in being a person that isn't noticed, there's hundreds and thousands and millions of people walking around the world not necessarily feeling as though there's anything missing all the time. Many of them are enjoying themselves, many of them aren't. But underneath all of that there's a disquiet, a sense of something missing, a hole, like there's a hole. And in order to fill that hole people do all sorts of things like try to become rich or be good in relationships or become Christians or Buddhists or become balanced people, like therapy is about becoming a very balanced sort of person who's totally accepting of everything and has worked through their block, emotional blocks and all that stuff. It's all a part of filling some sense of loss, some, some feeling, some sense that there's something that isn't quite whole, some secret hasn't been, is there but can't be seen. And so we fill ourselves with these things and one of, the, one of the things we do with this hole is to try and fill it with something called enlightenment. People hear about something called enlightenment or liberation and they go, uh, they hear about somebody who teaches enlightenment so they think, feel, this is another way I can, maybe this is the way that I can feel whole. Because this sounds like the ultimate hole filling activity. And so go to teachers and all through our lives we've always believed as individuals that, the, that effort brings results. So personal in, we live in a world of personal endeavour and we live in a world of, of anticipation. It's always going to be better tomorrow. And we go to people, uh, teachers, and most teachers, most apparent teachers and so-called masters teach us as individuals that in order for that, uh, for wholeness to arrive or uh, enlightenment to arrive, we need to become something, like become very still or uh, drop the ego or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, it's a long, it's usually quite a long list of things. Meditate, all those things. And Again, what's happening is that somewhere the sense of the person is being reinforced all the time. Always it's about me. Everything is about me. I have to become rich. I have to be good at my job. I have to be a good lover. I have to become enlightened. In, in a sense, right from the first moment of separation, that first I thought, which arises at a very young age, then from that moment onwards, seeking begins. From the moment of separation from the whole, there is a seeker. There is no one that doesn't seek all the time that there's a person. So seeking happens. 
And also at that moment, the I thought arises, the dreamer is created and built up through life. We become the dreamer in the dream called I am a person in the world. There is a world out there and I'm a person in it who has to negotiate with the world. So the function of that apparent person is to dream, only to dream. It's the dreamer. And we dream that we can become enlightened too. I, I, if I go to this master or that master, I can become an enlightened person. It's another part of the dream. Awakening is the realization that there is no one. Awakening is awakening from the dream that there is someone. When the dream, the idea of there being someone drops away, when the seeker is no more, that which is sought becomes apparent. It doesn't come down from anywhere, it's all there is. What we seek is all there is. Everything, what we seek is, is what is everything. What we seek is aliveness, what I call radical aliveness, which is aliveness without there being anybody in it that's alive. It's just aliveness. It's like you're sitting on a seat, breathing is happening, sitting on a seat is happening, hearing this voice is happening, hearing sounds is happening. This is aliveness, this is being. It never came and it never went away. There's always been aliveness. And you could get up and run out of this room as quickly as you could to get away from aliveness and it would still be aliveness. You could resist everything and people do resist what's being suggested here. And resisting aliveness is also aliveness. Avoiding aliveness, alloy, avoiding being this is also being this. There's nothing which is not oneness, which is not aliveness. And in some way or other, the dreamer thinks they have to find aliveness, they have to find being, they have to find oneness or enlightenment. So they spend their time looking for enlightenment. That is also aliveness. There's nothing right or wrong with it, it's absolutely what it is. And then people hear, or come to realise, that what they're looking for, they can't find. There's a realization with some people that they can't find what they're looking for and they don't even need to find it. And there's a dropping away of the idea that I am a separate person. And there is that which is sought. And that which is sought is being what is this but breathing, sitting on a chair, being what is, liveness, being this. Absolutely simple and very, very ordinary. It's not about big events and becoming a great this or the other. It's simply about the absolute ordinariness of sitting on a chair. Then the miracle is that when you're sitting on a chair, you're still doing something in it. You're still looking, there's still a looking for something. You're not really sitting on the chair, you're waiting for the next moment. The miracle is when you are not, there is just sitting on a chair. And then wonder arises, childlike wonder of this. This is what we long for, the childlike wonder of this. The perfect lover, we meet the perfect lover who never left us, never left us and never will leave us, the constant lover, pure, timeless being. And then the game, what happens, instead of being a search for something, becomes a celebration. Awakening is simply the celebration of aliveness. So we can talk together about this. We can never describe liberation. We can never describe the wonder of this. But we can talk together and the words point to something that's beyond the words. In a sense, here it's possible to come to see that this is it. Not that at the end of this talk, uh, you know, it's going to happen sort of this evening or next week. 
even halfway through, you know, if he answers the right question or if I get the right answer, then that'll be, that isn't it, this is it, this is it. It never was not it. So already you've got it. You can all go now. I'm going, I'll go out the pub and get have a beer. Already this is it. You don't need anyone to teach you. You don't need a teacher. I, how can I teach you to breathe or sit on a chair? Why would anybody have the arrogance to teach you to be when there is only being? It's utterly simple, directly, this. All the teachers are doing is teaching you to become something. All teaching is about becoming something, becoming still, becoming whatever. And always you're going to become it. You never are it, but you're always you're going to become it. If you try a bit harder, you'll get there. That's crap. It's just crap. You are there. You are this. This is it. This is the beginning of the end. But this is also the end of the beginning. Hope is, the, is, is one of the most powerful ways to avoid awakening. Hope, seeking. Seeking is the most effective way to not awaken. And longing. A longing. Well, longing, uh, uh, longing in a sense is something that's very alive. It's, it's, it's something in the body that's felt. And uh, the trouble is with longing, or no, the trouble with the mind is that the mind turns longing into a search from a subject to an op for an object. But if, if you just, well, you can't stay with longing. But if there's just the staying with longing, it's just very alive. It's like anything else, like, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling in the body, longing. <coughs> it's good. <coughs> it's not good, it's longing. <laughs> How can you be sure that this is all there is? <laughs> how, how can you be sure? I can't be sure that this is all there is. This is all there is. <laughs> there is no one that can be sure, but there's no one here. I am all that is, and this is all that is. I don't know that. No, no, of course you don't. <laughs> you don't know it because you are a person trying to find out that this is all there is. Yeah. You, won't know it, you won't know it until there's no one looking. Then it will be known. So then all I can say is that I, I don't know anything. No, you don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> that sounds all right, but I have a feeling you think you do. <laughs> I, I think of, I do, but no one believes me. <laughs> you sound like a politician. Now. Yes, uh, evolution is simply part of the dream. The idea of karma, good and evil, evolution, change, uh, change anything like that, is just a dream. It's not. It's, it's not. It's both real and unreal. It has no significance at all. So, in order to come out of the dream, 
I have to do nothing. No, no, because if you think you have to do nothing, then there's someone doing nothing. All you end up with is someone doing nothing that has no relevance to awakening at all. Because what you are is someone very busily doing nothing. <laughs> so what can I do? I'll tell you what you could do, you could start a club. There's a guy over there. <laughs> you could call it the I'm fucking pissed off club. <laughs> Who's going to hang loose? No, who is going to hang loose? Yeah. Who's going to relax and not do it? People say, oh, so I'll just go on living my life. No, you bloody well won't. You've never lived your life. <laughs> like, living your life will go on happening, but it won't be you doing it. So I'm lost. <laughs> um, well, you could, yes. <laughs> as long as that's not doing something, yes. <laughs> of course you're lost, because you've lost paradise or believe you have. Let me tell you, this is it. Now, and that hopelessness is also, is still hope, of course. That's yeah, hopelessness, hopelessness is, yeah. The movement of hope yeah, continues yeah. in that so-called hopelessness. Yeah, yeah. So when you would say, I almost expected you to, that you did that, give up hope. Yeah, no, you can't, no, that's the same thing. Giving up hope is being hopeful. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll give up hope. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what is the difference if you are in pain, uh, if you are being crucified, and now? I'm not going to say crucifixion isn't in anymore now. <laughs> it's too old fashioned. <laughs> the, the difference is that it's very simple. Pain arises, uh, pain arises, or someone believes they are a person who has pain. Is there any advantage in? None at all. <laughs> the only thing is that all the time that you think you own pain, then you're then there's obviously some sort of sense of it happening to someone. This is the imprisonment. This is the difference is between imprisonment and freedom. One is boundless, the other one is bound. That's all. And as long as you believe that it's happening to you, then there's nothing you can do about it. There obviously isn't, no. Because you are the dreamer of the idea of imprisonment. Yeah, the dream of personal, being a separate individual is the dream of imprisonment. And the teaching that you can get out of that is also the teaching of imprisonment. Because the teaching that there's something that you can do about becoming enlightened or free imprisons you in the idea that there is someone called you. So it further imprisons you. So could you make the sense, then I can make the final statement and say, okay, I'm not free, I'm finished. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck, really. <laughs> you can say what you like. It's, I, the, the, Oneness has no interest in that story. Oneness is that story, but it has no interest in ending or not ending that story. So there's no agenda. Then it's all about being aware of oneness. But who is going to be aware of oneness? <clears throat> no one, but as long as you experience oneness. No one has ever experienced oneness. All the time there is someone, there is someone looking for oneness. Uh, then, then is the separation, and then there's also no way to get out of it once that no. is going on. I know how what is being in oneness is the most easy thing. But once you're out of it, there's no way you can get back to it because. No. just happens. 
I mean, the other thing is, there's no hurry, because of death, there is only one. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. You've only got a few more years to live. Buy, <laughs> <coughs> you know, don't come. It's buy your, spend your money on a new car, and enjoy that, you know. And then when you die, there'll only be one. The only problem is you can't do anything about looking for one. All the time, there's a longing for it. You're, you, you know, your head's in, in the tiger's mouth now, so you're going to go on looking. Yeah, I have this problem. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go on looking, although I found already many times. Well, you have never found one, and nobody ever has, but oneness has a wisdom. And then you come back and think you found it. And that you can have it and keep it. Like you have everything else, like pain and money and lovers and all that. It's the one thing you can't have because it's everywhere. It's the one thing you can't lose because it's everywhere. It's the one thing you can't attain. Because Aren't you it's in all the process there. of looking for it and nothing or no one can help you, right? Absolutely. I'm not helping you, I'm not interested in helping you because I, I don't see anyone there to help. But anyway, I can't help you. How can I help you? You are already that. There is only that. And then I keep depending on, uh, on people who are all the time minus <coughs> to go back to oneness. That's the, in fact the only thing. Yeah. That's good for you. It's not good or bad, it is what it is. Some years, some years ago, I was in a, a state of consciousness that uh, everything I was was broken down, totally broken down. It was terrifying. I was in sheer terror. Mm. Uh, it felt it was pitch black darkness. Um, and I said, of my um, attitude was, okay. I'm nothing anymore. I'm nothing anymore as a person. But I don't want to have to let destroy myself. So I kept as a lifeline. I'm a divine spark, and I go on with nothing. Afterwards, I wondered if I what should happen if I have had uh, let go of that lifeline. It felt as if I should be become insane then. Mm. But I wonder what would happen. I always I survived. It, it really felt as a surviving. But what would have happened if I had let go if that maybe it was a concept too? Yeah. And no one knows. And no one knows. Because everything that has happened to you <laughs> yeah. up until uh, quarter to four <laughs> is totally and utterly perfect. No one has ever made a right or wrong decision. Everything, no one has ever made a right or wrong decision. Nothing could have been any other way mm -hmm. in the dream. But, it's absolutely appropriate as it is. But it felt as if I, as if I could uh, go deep, could have gone deeper into the nothingness. Yeah, but you couldn't because no one can, no one ever has. Whatever happened was absolutely appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. People say to me, I, I listen to you and I've meditated for 20 years and is, that's now a total waste of time. Mm -hmm. It isn't, that could, couldn't have been any other way. I love that so much what Nathan Jill said. Um, the I came in 
trying to claim its own absence. Yes. yes. And yeah, yeah that's that the is, same as that's the same. Yeah. If, if this can also just drop away, come yeah. back. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Anything can happen, yeah. and it then does. You have not uh, cancelled the, the, the word invitation, no? Invitation. I haven't cancelled it, no. No, no, I don't hear it. Uh, it doesn't come up very much, these things. No. <laughs> <laughs> the dream and uh, all what, what happens, what arises, is also, you say it very, very uh, many times, an invitation. Mm. For, the, the, the seeker, who, the apparent seeker who is looking, is actually looking at oneness. Mm -hmm. So everything that seems to surround the seeker is oneness inviting the seeker that is inviting. oneness to see that all, everything surrounding the seeker is oneness. It's an invitation. Hey, hiya, I'm yeah. here. Here, yeah. it's knocking at the door. Yeah, yeah. come on, you know, yeah. I'm, hello, you're looking yeah. for me, I'm here, yeah. Yeah. hello. Yeah. Yeah. This despair is, is knocking at the door to, uh, yeah. to see it. Okay. But in the end, when it's seen, of course, it's realized there's no door to knock on. Uh -huh. But the door you're knocking on is also it. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe the error is to try to understand you. The error is, is thinking that there's anything that can be done, or there's anyone. Yeah, but there's nothing to understand. There's nothing to understand. What, we're, what is being shared here is totally beyond understanding. Understanding is a subtle form of seeking. Understanding is nothing. Understanding is someone who understands. There are people in this room, there are people around who could write this out in five sentences who have utter clarity about it, an awakening hasn't happened. So our utter clarity is simply utter clarity. It has nothing to do with a awakening. You can have someone who is utterly clear, standing next to someone who is utterly confused. An awakening will happen in one way or the other, <coughs> utterly regardless. <laughs> You're not using any mind to <coughs> No one can. The mind or thinking happens. Well, that's really easy. <coughs> Absolutely, that easy. You can go now. <laughs> I, I mean, I, the, every time I try to understand you, then I make a mistake. I shouldn't try yeah. to understand you. Easy. <coughs> Because it is utterly easy, simple, and directly this. We all, everyone knows that, because they are that. We all know it's this. At the moment you try to understand it, you are yeah. on the wrong track. Yeah. Because then you're trying to understand this. And all there is, is this. Children, child, children don't try to understand, they just... But you go to school, children, school, right? <laughs> Kindergarten. Kindergarten, yeah. yeah. That's when it all, that's when all the trouble start. That's when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> but that's still one. Still, there's nothing right or wrong with that, that's what happens. One thing that, that like the statement, all dualistic teachings are subtly or grossly misleading because all they, dualistic teachings are dualistic. a teaching of imprisonment. Well, yes. Despite all claims that hierarchical settings or, for instance, staying in the non-verbal I am, 
etc., 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 all claims that they have led to those who did to awakening, even liberation, is, as I have heard you correctly, basically misleading, mis. Well, they are what they are, but they are what they are. confusion misleads people into believing that there is something that can be done. Yes. Does that not create with the many, many, many dualistic uh, teachers any kind of type of friendly uproar? Friendly uproar? <laughs> well, I don't know, here? Or no, but are there protests uh, against the radicality? Yes, absolutely. They are. <laughs> yeah. One of the arguments that is so lovely that comes out of this is, well, of course, what you're saying is that people, that there is no responsibility, people have no responsibility <coughs> to become awakened. But yeah. I'm not saying people don't have a responsibility. I'm saying there aren't any people. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I uh, had some scene here of your last uh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> books are books are crap. Yeah. Don't, okay. it, has don't not, it has not the right title, eh? No. <laughs> that's, an already. that's an American book. Well, oh, yeah. you know, it had to be translated into American, really. And it took a long time to translate into American because the Americans like a certain sort of language. Oh, oh. oh it's not correct what here then. Eh? There isn't anything correct in that. May I had some lines? Yeah, yeah. Just a few. <laughs> yeah, go on. Oh. I began to understand what healing the blind means in the Gospels. And I asked very deeply, not just intellectually, but with every fiber, 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 fiber of my being, of my being yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have my eyes open. Yes. I was ready to give up everything for just one glimpse of that mystery. Yes. Three days later, three yeah. days later, <laughs> <laughs> by walking across the park, I was no longer doing the walking. So it's all of that was in the dream. The point oh, yeah. is that before awakening happened, I thought that I was asking to, to be shown the mystery. Because the thing about Jesus healing the blind isn't healing yeah. people who are blind. It's opening their eyes to see that there is nothing to look for. Yeah. It looks like fulfilling a prayer. Yes, it does. Yeah. It's a story. It's, but it's also a uh, description. Of, it's not a prescription. Do it it's a description of a it's story. Only a description, not a prescription. No, there is nothing described here. Right. I understand. He's, there's something there. Can you? Well, there is this recognition. Is this recognition part of the dream? Uh, no, the recognition arises in timelessness. There is only, no, there is no time. What arises and seems to happen is, dream, is a dream. This is a dream called things happening in time. Recognition is that there is, or happens in no time, or apparently happens in no time. We're interested in this again, I'm afraid. But recognition, seeing oneness, is, 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 is timeless and happens to no one. Or you could put it the other way around, there's a story of somebody walking across a park, which is a story in what seems to be a time sequence. And then suddenly the story and time end. There is no one. There's this. So when there is this recognition right now, sorry, when there is this recognition right now, is that part of the dream? There isn't a now, but the recognition 
is, uh, happens to no one. It simply is the seeing of oneness. And then thereafter, let's say, without going into the awakening thing, what is seen is the playing out of a dream. Which has no meaning. And it's, I think it's coffee time, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to have a lot of coffee. You know. I don't care about you, but I want some coffee. <laughs>
What, what to do with that urge wanting to do something? <laughs> There is nothing that can, there is no one that can do anything, but, but some, what can happen is seeing that there is an urge. And that's it. That's it. Thank you. The urge is this, seeing this is this, knowing this is the beginning of the end. The one that knows you're sitting there looking at me, is the, is the one, is nothing, knowing you're looking at me. And that, that can, that can, well it doesn't change, but what can happen in knowing that you think you are looking at me, or knowing that that's, that thing there is looking at me, there can just be looking that can arise out. When uh, we talked before, <clears throat> before the coffee break, and just that sentence, oneness is seeking oneness. There was uh, sadness coming up. Yeah, yeah. There can be a sadness about, um, in a sense, uh, whilst there's still a person, there can be a sadness about a sense of something lost or mislaid. Or, and there can also be a sense of the whole world mislaying uh, A sense of sadness about the world not seeing that all there is is one. It's still in the story, but it's, it happens. <laughs> about the part of unconditional love. You talked before about it. So, first some recognition, some sadness with, you talked about the desert, and then a certain kind of well, acceptance, and then unconditional love. Well, the nature of oneness is stillness, silence, impersonality, and, and um, the impersonal and unconditional, you could say those are values because they're all just words. And compassion, which is simply the destroyer of illusion. So you could say the nature, when, when there is no one, it is seen, this, the mind starts getting very tricky about this, it is seen that everything that's happening is the expression of unconditional love. Unconditional love. It's a way of trying to describe something that's not describable. So that unconditional love is all embracing. Of course that unconditional love is also everything. <laughs> so naturally nothing is denied. There is nothing right or wrong, there is only what is, which is the appearance out of nothing of everything. Um, I experience resistance. And the resistance is unconditional love arising as resistance. Excuse me? <laughs> resistance is unconditional love, oneness, arising as resistance. It's the resistance is it, not when there is no resistance, there it will be. Resistance is it, is aliveness, yeah. is oneness. Thank you. Okay.
there's still the hope for blissfulness. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> blissfulness is one one of the well is a quality that people think arises <clears throat> with with um, liberation. It does sometimes. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Or everything arises in liberation for but but for no one. Um, You have to be a bit careful with this, but the joy of liberation is nothing to do with blissfulness, anger, or anything that arises. It is to do with the utter boundlessness of being this. So it isn't because of anything. It is in spite of everything. It is prior, it's, it is it is simply the joy of being, whatever is. And it doesn't matter what's going on out there that apparently is, it's the joy of being. And bliss is one of the things that can arise and then pass away again. So it's constant that it, this is you know, this guy who was talking about peace, the state of peace. It, it, uh, uh, liberation is not a state, it is, it is that which is constant. It, that's all there is, there is only liberation. There is only liberation, there is only oneness. So he... So, you are not only the most boring, but also the most disappointing. Yes. Oh no, absolutely. That's a compliment. That's good. <coughs> this is about disappointment. The mind, more and more the, the, the mind comes here, the more disappointed the mind becomes. It tries to destroy this, or it tries to devalue it, or it tries to avoid it. And it goes on and on coming and trying to do that, and in the end it sort of says, oh, fuck this, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. What's this? Um, I'm just wondering how you, because you do have a partner, don't you? I do have a... <coughs> a romantic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, how do you experience that? Oh. Uh, <laughs> do you want the details? Or yeah. the <laughs> I don't experience it. It happens. It just happens. I don't know what that's like. Um. <coughs> No, in a sense, the dreamer can't know that because the dreamer thinks in the same way as with the wall that the, that the other person is another person. So what you then have is what's called a relationship. But in reality, there is no such thing because there is no one else. Then, then there is no object out there to which you relate. But does it feel like um, sharing of unconditional love? Just well, no, no, those are words. It's, it's indescribable. The only you say it's like sharing unconditional love, then the mind can go bad with that. Yeah. Or make up all sorts of funny stories. I can't, it's indescribable, just as everything else is. But still, it comes up that in practical life you are sharing a life with a person. Um, that's how it appears to be. And there, there, I mean, the other part of this is that there are two, you could say in appearance only, there are two body-mind mechanisms that are conditioned, and so games still go on. You know, like, you know about games? <laughs> Those sort of things can go, but they've diminished to such a degree that they then don't have any significance anymore, because everything is seen as a game anyway. There's no longer that sort of, um, well, there's no longer any importance to anything that goes on. So there's no meaning making? There's no... Meaning making 
holding on to anything. I didn't get that. There's no meaning. Meaning, meaning, So this is it. Thank you. <laughs> so in the search for oneness, what happens in the apparent world, and it's only an appearance, in the history of the apparent world, what happens is that we have families. We have, in some way, other, what arises is the family. And what arises in the search for one is, is the idea of a father or a mother who will show us oneness or who will guide us to heaven or wherever you like. If you look at most of the religions, there's always a father figure or a mother figure that somehow is at the head of the movement or the religion and obviously everybody that is involved in that religion follows the guidance of that father or mother. Even Buddhism which denies the existence of God, somewhere subtly a Buddhist sees the Buddha as his father or her father. So what, what is happening all the time in the game of the search for oneness is that oneness appears as Jesus or Buddha or whatever you like, Ramana Maharshi. And the followers of that particular religion, religion then try to copy or to try to copy the father, to try to do what the father tells them to do. Somehow that's, there's a, there's a feeling in that in that setup, in that structure of safety and, and in a way it's quite easy, although some of the things you're told to do or not to do are, are quite difficult, nevertheless you're sort of secure because you've got this, this great guide either in heaven or somewhere floating around who's telling you what to do and of course he's got other fathers down on earth telling, also telling you they're the sort of sub-fathers <laughs> or sub-mothers. And of course all of that structure goes on supporting the idea that there is such a thing as an individual. Because the individual sees, actually subtly sees God or Christ or whatever you like, Buddha, as an individual who has, say, discovered something or is the source of a, a secret or holy knowledge which can then be followed by the person who is the disciple or whatever. So the whole emphasis in the world is of what I would call individual spiritual development. And it all is totally meaningless and utterly irrelevant to awakening. It's the way the mind, the way the mind functions is only in time. Mind thinking is the clock ticking. The mind is the time maker. The mind is also the story maker. We make up our stories through the mind. Of course there is no such thing as a mind, there's only thinking. But thinking creates the idea of time and a story and a path to somewhere. And it also creates the idea that the safest way to follow the path is to be told where the path is by a father or a mother that we can follow. It's all very comfortable and predictable. But awakening is the realisation that there is no individual and there is no father and no mother. The whole of the idea of hierarchy and dependence on a father and a mother completely collapses in awakening. Because what collapses more than anything, what is lost in awakening, Awakening and liberation are about a loss, not a gain. Something doesn't come from above and fill you with holy goodness or whatever. 
awakening or liberation is a loss. It's a total loss of everything. And one of the parts of that loss which the individual de depends on is the idea of fatherhood or motherhood. One that is greater. So, when awakening happens, the whole sense of a father or, or mother falls away. And in fact, awakening is total aloneness. Awakening, liberation, is total anarchy. And anarchy is having no leadership. There's no one to depend on anymore. There's nothing to depend on anymore. And what's also wonderful about awakening and liberation is that if it's absolutely clear, which it can only be, otherwise it's not awakening and liberation, if it's totally clear, is that you don't need any leadership because there isn't anywhere to go. There's nothing to adulate, there's nothing to copy. There's no one to copy. All there is, is this. All there is, is the celebration of aliveness, just as it is, immediately. This is aliveness. So there's no, nothing to follow, there's nothing you have to be anymore, there's nothing you have to become. There's no one. All there is, is aliveness. All there is, is beingness. The whole idea of roles, fathers or mothers, simply collapses because it's a construct of the mind. There's no authority, there's no one that can teach you to be what already is. How can anyone do that? All teachers are dependent on the idea that there is an individual who has to become something else, who has to become better, stiller, more worthy, egoless, desireless, all that crap. That's, the, that's what teachers depend on, that whole idea of teaching you to become something. And all, all the time there is a sense that you are an individual, you have a, an in, well, a, a, a very strong feeling that you're not good enough. Because of course, in a sense, from the moment of separation, you feel as though you've been rejected into out of paradise. So you've lost your lover. You've lost the perfect lover. When we lose our lovers, you know, the first thing that arises is, I'm not good enough. He doesn't love me because I'm no good. So the greatest loss of all is losing the perfect lover, paradise. So we always feel unworthy after that. And if somebody comes up to us and says, look, you're unworthy and I can teach you to become worthy, it's such a powerful message, it's so attractive. <laughs> That's how the whole structure of the apparent world we live in, of religion and growth and becoming better, goes on being fed. Until it's realised by some, and it's becoming more and more realised, until it's realised and seen, or discovered that there is no one. There is no authority, there is no one, all there is is this. Of course, the other thing that tends to happen in that awakening is that we also lose our own roles. The, the role of being a disciple, or even the role of being a mother or a father, begins to disintegrate. We don't need a role to, to make us feel that we are real and people in the world. We don't, it all just falls apart. Mothering can still happen, of course. The celebration of mothering. What's wrong with that? A brothering, a sistering. Of, but there isn't anyone in there. There never has been anyone in there. Suddenly there is no one in there that has to act in a certain way that's been taught. So what we're here to talk about today, let's start talking together if you want to. Um, on the question of there being no process, or, um, is it more or less likely that somebody is going to become enlightened um, regardless of their state of mind. I mean, could it, for example, be that somebody that's um, totally 
involved and addicted to the work or the world or the appearance could per chance. Absolutely. And it does happen, yes. So, in other words, then when, when uh, you hear advice saying, um, well, you shouldn't really get involved with things that confirm your mind in its own existence, like, I don't know, uh, name something, uh, some, some activity, yeah. um, then, then you shouldn't do that because then you're reinforcing your sense of ego and all that. doesn't matter. But, well, it's not that it doesn't matter. It's actually that idea, that suggestion, comes out of the deep ignorance. It comes out of the idea that there is someone there who can choose not to have a busy mind, let's say. Or, it can, or the, that there is someone who can choose to be in good company, or, or any of those ideas that you could choose not to have a busy mind are based on the idea that there is someone there who can choose not to have a busy mind. <laughs> but there is, there is no, so there isn't anyone. No, no. So, so if in fact you choose to do that because it, it makes your mind more peaceful, then that's just simply for your mind. Well, if you think you are choosing to have a peaceful mind and you succeed for about half an hour, which is usually how long it is, or five minutes, <laughs> then you, you, have, you have reinforced the idea that your choice brings about a result, however te temporary. So you go on being reinforcing the idea that you are a person who has a choice that brings a result. So it's traps within traps within Oh yeah, it's all a game. It's yeah. one is playing the awful game yeah. that it's created called I am an individual. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it that in, in these meetings, you said also before, you know, it can be um, stronger this, this awareness or, or, or consciousness or whatever. So, in a way you would think that coming here would, would help, would, would, you know, would, would help you to, to, to I don't know, yes. to or how, how you to call it. It doesn't help you, but it is a play, uh, what, this, in this energy, when two or more are gathered together, there is an opening to this, there's a readiness not in you, but there's a readiness for this to be heard. And there's also, energetically, which is much more powerful, an openness into the boundless. Okay? Now, but the point about that is you could say that that helps you. It doesn't actually help you, it's destroying you. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. That's all right, fine. Okay. Uh, but also, let's go right back to There's nothing you can do about being here or not being here. All right? So, you know, if you think it's good to be here, it doesn't mean you're going to be here next time. And also, there's nothing you can do about being open or not being open, about hearing this or not hearing it. Well, it happens or it doesn't happen. Coming here helps me to be more open. Well, you believe so, that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to speak in but how, Well, yeah, but hold so, on, how can you be more open? No, okay, there is... Okay. Okay. <laughs> It's amazing how our grammar is so, you know, used to go on reinforcing the idea that, that you will be more, you know, I will be more open. No, it's just not it's that. It is that there will be openness. Yeah. 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 But that makes you think that coming to these meetings, you know, is something that not can help me, but, but stimulate. But is open. Yeah, it's yeah, open. So, you know. Yeah, go on. <coughs> So, are you going to come next time? <laughs> but you don't know that. You see what I'm saying? Right. It's fine, I know I hear what you're saying. But, but you're then saying you can choose to be. Yeah. I mean, you can come and choose to... You can find out where I live and come and put a tent that you down the road and sort of feel the energy. It's all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? There isn't anyone that can... It will happen or it won't happen. <laughs> I, mean, I just want to be clear that what the thing about the tent isn't 
trying to say that this is anything to do with me. It's absolutely nothing to do with me. Yeah, I was planning to put my thing in. Oh, you were. I'll show you a spot. Next to the police. Oh, no. I, uh, <laughs> how's the totally fucking pissed off club going? Yeah, Any more members? Much better. <laughs> <laughs> Question. No, okay, they go always, they turn around the same point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's all getting rid or getting more detached or getting more aware that this, this ego doesn't have no substantial reality, Even though here and there, I can catch, I, I can, you know, get a great sense of that. So this is the basic spiritual thing. Is you, you believe? Stick. You believe? Yeah, is to stick, to try to stick in this state, to to research. Okay, now, okay, yeah, there is no research in this and this, but is that? You're still, you've got, you're still into the idea that yeah. somebody can detach. From Otherwise, them. what? Because let's be clear: if there is somebody detaching from the ego, I can tell you this: it's the ego doing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's the great spiritual ego that will See. detach itself from being egotistical anymore. And as it does, it oh, okay. bigger. <laughs> In the last year, oh. uh, I, I became a bit more acquainted with the teaching of Ramana and. Punjaji and Vilain, no? <laughs> and, still, still now, after many of the experiences, you know, I found in, in that. Uh, Lineage. I, I found, you know, a certain truth. Right. So, the, the, where all the problem starts is from the identification with the ego. So, in a way or another, uh, a whole religion, uh, uh, they look to be a way to loosen you from that identification, yes. even though through the, the millennia they do, uh, you know, but the term yeah. of, of all yeah. the spiritual systems is, is to destroy the ego. Destroy the ego. Okay. Is that so? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is so that the, the, the basis of, of the majority of religion <laughs> or teachings of enlightenment is to destroy the ego. Of course, it's also even more deep true, but the basis of <laughs> <laughs> the majority of spiritual teaching are total bullshit. <laughs> okay. They are based on ignorance. The, the, the most, one, you said the most. Fundamental ignorance. Okay, the most. Well, all. Oh, all. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what is left? Let's, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but also, I am available. You know, to kick all this away, oh, anyway, I have no problem, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and what's that? What's no. that? Tell me what's no. that. No, is that? When you kicked it all away, what's that? No, 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 I, I, no, not really. Uh, uh, I, 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 okay, I kick all this away. And what's that? Beginning with N. <laughs> <laughs> Can awakening happen uh, gradually, or is it always? No, it doesn't happen gradually. It's always uh, spontaneously. Yes, although these days it doesn't necessarily mean that there's an event. 
There were quite more and more, it seems, these days than there isn't an event. People wake up one morning and awake, a, a different perception has, arrived, has arisen. And the sense of me isn't there. Then the sense of me will come back and try to claim that, and then, then it's that period before <coughs> liberation. But, but certainly, the dropping away of me and the seeing of one is a direct and immediate thing, rather than something that you can creep up on or something that you know just comes in bits. There aren't bits of oneness. You know, the seeing of oneness is a direct, complete seeing. And also liberation, you, you don't, you know, it isn't a gradual thing in a sense, although the, the dissipation of the me looking for the one, the, 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 me, the me's power or apparent power sort of dissipates in that period of awakening, which you could call a gradual thing. But the seeing of me is also oneness, is a sudden direct. I feel we are always in a kind of approach. Of a approach. An approach. Approach to a what is. Approach to the mystery yes. that is there. Which and even when we call something emptiness, it becomes an object. Yes. There cannot be any emptiness. Which can be approached. So yeah. far, we are totally lost. Yeah. In absolutely. our in our try in totally. our search to find anything to understand anything. Yeah. Socrates, he has said, I know that I don't know. This yeah. has been his last word. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. <clears throat> There's a book written called The Book of One, I think it's called, and it's by a guy who's written about what he calls advisor, which yeah. is not true. And in it, the book <laughs> includes all sorts of processes and approaches to oneness. How can anything approach oneness if there is only oneness. So the way movement forward is oneness. This is oneness, not oneness is there and I can get there. It can't be approached. There's nothing to approach because approaching is oneness. No, people don't wake up. There is only this. And in this, there is the idea that there isn't this. When the idea that this isn't it falls away, there is only this. But it doesn't happen to anyone. Nobody awakens. Nobody becomes liberated. But awakening happen. Well, if you want to say... The nearest I can get to it is that what seems to happen is the falling away of the idea 
that there is anyone who needs to become awakened. That's all that you could say. Apparently it happens. So an illusion, an illusion drops away, the illusion that there is somebody who needs to liberate. Yeah. And this, of course, I can do nothing about. No, because you believe you yeah. need liberating. No, that's great. <laughs> but, and, and does this happen at random? <laughs> well, no, because it doesn't. And again, you see, what you're doing is personalise it. Will it happen to him or him or her? It doesn't happen to her or him or him. It didn't happen to this. So it doesn't happen to people. Because he hates this. <laughs> yeah, I understand now. It has nothing to do with the people, in fact. No. It, in it, fact, it, it's it, the opposite. When there isn't anybody, this is all there is. Right, right, right. And even whilst there is somebody here, this is all there is. And there's nothing I can do to fall away. No. It's a bit like, I mean, a similar, a similar thing is, the, is at the moment that, you know, people in the world are saying that the planet is being destroyed. Yeah? So there are quite a lot of people around who think that we should save the planet. Can I, I, can, I can suggest to them one way of saving the planet, the only way, if they all fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're trying now to reach other moons and other... It's the similar thing. It's, it is that you're in the way of what you're looking for. And we are, all the people in the world are in the way of are destroying the planet. It's the people that are destroying the planet, but they have the arrogance to believe they can save it too. <laughs> And the only way they can really save it is to leave, yeah. which is probably what's going to happen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Already a lot of people left. Second, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 26 December, 200,000. I noticed that, no, that nature only has to do that. Tony, what is the fun of struggling, me struggling, all these people in the room struggling, and you really seem to enjoy us struggling? I enjoy you. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this enjoy, this, that being enjoy, celebrates aliveness, and part of that aliveness is struggle. But there are people who are totally fascinated by the struggle. Most of the people in the world are totally fascinated by individualism and doing it, getting it, and all that. It's not for them, it doesn't seem to be a struggle. Underlying it, there's a sort of despair or a desperation, but they don't usually recognize that. So we, I enjoy in my struggle, in me struggle. Oh, I don't know whether you are, are you? Well, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't cry about it. No, no. Some people do, and others don't. It's, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. It's even more gorgeous when, in a way, you see the meaningness of it, you know, that there's no need to struggle anymore. That sort of really becomes fun. That's what I just felt, yes. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Hi, yeah. It's easier to talk about high performance cars with you. Than yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Much easier. You've talked a lot uh, today about um, that no one's here, we're not here, nothing exists. Um, nothing exists is a funny one, really. That, you know, what is here is both real and unreal. That is getting to what my question is oh, now. Okay. Is um, Can you talk a little bit more? You've talked about nothing being here or we are not here, but there's also the witness so that through enlightenment one also sees what is here. Oneness appearing as... Well, we don't see, the oneness sees. The, uh, the, the watcher is the no thing. Which sees that we're trying to, we are something trying to be no thing. Can In you other words, the no thing watches itself apparently being something, trying to be nothing. <laughs> that, that, was, that was what I was asking you to sort of expand. Yeah. I can't expand it really, that's it. 
<laughs> there is no thing, and no thing happens. So the everything is the no thing happening. There aren't two things. <clears throat> when the no thing starts to move, when it comes over the wall and says, thinks, I am a person and this is manifestation, it's still no thing moving and thinking it's something. And in that thinking that it's something, it also arises the idea of there being a separate individual. When the separate individual is there, it feels as though it's a me, I'm separate. But there can come a point when uh, there's a seeing of that game being played, but what's... Is that what you call liveliness? Li well, yeah, but, yeah, liveliness, aliveness is oneness, but in this situation where you believe you're, you're dreaming that you are an individual, that which is uh, the source of everything sees that it's dreaming that it's an individual. That's the watcher seeing the apparent individual arise. So that's awareness seeing aliveness through the eyes of an apparent Tony Parsons? Well, it's, it, no, it's, it's already separated itself. Uh, this is all artificial. But, it, but the watcher is, is seeing that there is something that th thinks it's separate. It is actually itself, but, it, but it's dreaming that it's separate. So the watcher is the source, is the no thing, is the silence, which sees that there is a game going on called I am a separate person. Okay, I'm none the wiser, but thank you. Yeah. That's why, in a, in a sense, I say it's the beginning of the end. It sounds then like it's a journey. Of course it isn't, because there is no such thing as a journey or time. But, but the beginning of the end is the sudden seeing from nowhere that Tony part of Sorry, what's your name? Hans. Hans is pretending to be Hans the separate person. That's when Hans the separate person begins to die. Now that sounds like something that's happening in time, it isn't, but that's the beginning of the end of Hans. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I've bought a Mazda MX-5, cares. <laughs> Does existence give uh, lessons uh, <coughs> to people who are not uh, awakened, or they, or they just let you be awakened forever? <laughs> well, there isn't something out there that can give lessons, but the whole of the apparent life apparent process and, and what seems to happen to the person is simply the invitation to see that there is no one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of everything that's happening right now is the invitation for the seeker to see that there's only oneness. So I should be aware, I could be aware now of this invitation. You won't ever be aware of it, but you could, it could suddenly be realised that there's no one there who needs to be aware of it. No way to survive, eh? I didn't get that. No way to survive. Well, surviving happens. You know, that's, that's surviving. Oh yeah, I'm surviving well, I mean. <laughs> that, the surviving has no relevance to awakening, that's just survival. It's about this change of perspective and the awareness. And so, is it not so that the moment you recognize awareness actually being you and not this, the, the me is gone? 
Yeah, I mean, you don't realise yeah. there is just the scene, but there is no one. There is no one. There is no yeah. one. But invariably, what seems to happen is that you come back to claim that. Yeah. That's what seems to happen. It doesn't have to. I mean, awakening and liberation can happen <coughs> at the same time, yeah. although there is no such thing. They can both be simultaneous. Yeah. Yeah. But invariably, it seems with people that we, we meet and this happens to, there seems to be a period where the me wants to come back and claim it. Is, is there a longing of the me? Oh, I'm so the more me can only long. But like the me can only dream, the me, me also can only long. That's the game. Ah. The me longs for oneness. And is there a longness of oneness wanting to be one? No. There's no longing of there oneness, a, oneness, one, oneness that, that draws me here? Don't forget that oneness pretends to be two, and then the longing begins. But in fact, oneness longs for nothing, because one is nothing and everything. So it doesn't have to long for anything. Um, in liberation, cause and effect seems to be. Um, but there was a wise man sometimes who said, yes, it may be, so that cause and effect are not there anymore, but you cannot ignore cause and effect. And ignore? You cannot ignore. No, in, in liberation, all of the laws of duality go on functioning for no one. So cause and effect seems to be functioning in what's called the story. So if you hit a car, you have to pay the insurance premium. That seems to go on, but it goes on for no one. But they're not ignoring. It's, it's, it is being. So, not ignoring is being. Yeah. So, there's no difference to these laws, uh, whether you believe in them or not. Except that they become, and they are seen as part of the story which yeah. is meaningless. Yeah. They're seen as the play of oneness, rather than being significant and being uh, things that happen that will take you somewhere. It's seen by no one that there's nowhere to go, but it so happens that cause and effect in the story seem to happen without any meaning. If there's no one, who's driving this car then? <laughs> one is. So one is driving the one that appear, arises as a car. So who's enjoying it? Nobody. Well, there, there, there isn't anybody to enjoy it's it. It's just money. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're still into enjoyment, aren't you? <laughs> so what is happening isn't at all relevant anymore. The joy of the liberation is simply being. Being Tony Parsons? No, 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 being. But you are witnessing Tony no, I'm not witnessing anything. I, I am all that is, and the joy of being all that is is a boundless being. <laughs> How come that after awakening, life seems to be so much easier and flowing and better? Because, because to, to a great extent, the neurotic drive that pushed you into trying to fill the loss is no longer there. So things seem to work in a more harmonious way. And the trouble with that is that the mind then thinks, oh, I want to become enlightened, so it's all harmonious. You can't do that, but it is like that. That doesn't mean to say that disharmony won't happen still. Yeah. But yesterday we talked about... Uh, Trust. And Trust. Yes. And I realized that um, before trust, I, I had to tell myself, just trust the towers, everything is okay. And now it's more like I cannot not trust. Mm. It's like. Mm. I, my sense is that there's a resonance there with what's being said. It's totally, in some way, there's a totally yes about this. And the mind will, you know, mm -hmm. but somewhere underneath that, there's a totally yes. And that, you know, in my way, 
you could say could be a sort of trust. Yeah. Because although it hasn't been seen yet, there's a total knowing that this is it. This is it. We all know this is it. We're always looking out there pretending it isn't. So as you said there, everything that is arising, whatever is arising is this. If it's serenity, it's his oneness. If it's an idea that I don't get this, it's oneness. If it's impatience, it's oneness. Whatever is there is this. Is this oneness, is it energy? You could say it's energy, it's aliveness, it's being, whatever it is. The trouble with the mind is that the mind sees what's arising, which might be frustration or boredom or and thinks it isn't it, because, it, because the mind thinks in terms of duality. You know, this feeling of frustration isn't it, there must be something better than this or... But in fact, whatever is arising, is this. Can you explain the word duality a little bit more clearly? Well, duality, uh, in separation there are two, there seem to be two. In separation we become individuals and see everything else as something else. So in separation, there's subject and object, apparently. So if we're sitting there, we're taught, or we believe that, you know, liberation is being... And if we're sitting there and feeling, fuck this, then the mind would think that there's something that's wrong, and there's something else that's right. Whereas actually, fuck this, is it. Or whatever. What am I having for tea tonight? Shall I ask a question? Uh, it's whatever is arising is oneness. Do you any way of getting to your centre? There is no centre. <laughs> I think a lot of people here have made think they've got a centre. Yeah, there is a belief. There, there is no centre. Um, the belief is that in some way or other this can be seen from somewhere. There isn't anywhere to see this from, there is only seeing. So people are sitting in this room thinking that they have to see something, whereas actually it already is being seen. If people are looking at this, this is what this is oneness. But it's not seen from anywhere, it is simply seen. Whereas the teaching is see it from your centre, see Tony from your centre, see Tony from your heart. See Tony from the inner. See, <laughs> see, see, see Tony without, without so, thinking about it. Well, before. yeah, but that's another thing. You know, if you're seeing Tony and thinking about it, that's what's arising, seeing Tony and thinking about it. There's nothing right or wrong with anything. It is what it is. Directly, the mind starts thinking there's a certain way of doing things. So I throw awareness and whatnot. You're back in... You know, what was the, the, the strange thing about that is, but when the mind thinks there's a way of seeing that, this, that's also this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying, to, trying to extract from you um, about the, the way in which to communicate without the mind. Is there some sort of, I, hate, I know you hate the word method, but there's a lot of people sitting here who are sitting in one form or other of frustration or trying to go through the process to get somewhere near what you're talking about, myself included. And I'm just trying to find a way that I can not think and absorb what you're saying without thinking. Is no, you can't method? do that. You That's can't do it and you don't need to do it. There is something that's seeing what's happening. It doesn't matter about what's happening. It is that which sees what's happening. It's the looker, the one that looks, not you, the one that sees it. The knower, if you like, it's the knowing of what's happening. It doesn't matter a fuck what's happening, that's what I'm trying to say. The mind will come in and try and you know, measure what's happening, and that's trying to make one thing better than another, or judge what's happening. In fact, what is happening is known, and it's the knower that is being. <coughs> know what's happening. Who is to judge the mind? Yeah, including the mind, the activity of the mind. But there, there is something that knows <coughs> the mind is thinking, that thinking is happening. 
It's very simple. It's not. It's not anything esoteric. It's sitting on a chair or feeling indigestion or whatever is. It's right there, right now. It's immediate for everyone in this room. And I, you know, there is something happening. That's it. The knowing or something happening. You're now talking about witnessing something happening. Yeah, you could call it witnessing, yeah. So, by witnessing something's happening is by not thinking and not well, relating and you, not attaching to it. It isn't you that witnesses, it is that which witnesses. It is that which knows. What's in this room is not you, it is the knowing of this. You can't do it, but it's happening. It's sensing that that's there. So I'm going to hammer this one still further, so I get this, so I get this clear as what we're calling you for. Um, I pay. Oh, he paid. Did he pay? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's a typical of you. He's a real <laughs> 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 Always get someone else to pay for me. Um, I'm still trying to, I, I understand, I was get an idea of the idea of, of uh, living in oneness, or of being aware and that we are all part of exactly the same thing. I'm still trying to get back to um, oneness appearing as two, and then the eyes of witness through Tony Parsons, through Hans Kluger's, or, or through yeah, Festivals here. I mean, you are standing there and you are talking to us. This is how it appears to you. All of the time there's a sense or belief in an individual, the dream of individuality continues, and then what it looks out at and sees is apparently another individual. But you're not a I dream, don't... but you're not a dream, you're a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anyone there. Oh, well, that handsome, surely you still no, see No, I me. see a handsome form, well, quite handsome. <laughs> I see a form. I see the form and I hear the voice, but there is no one that I see there. This is unconditional love, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so I see that there is no one that is suffering. Yeah, yeah, I, I, this is, I get an idea. This is why, why in this sort of setting there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of expansiveness and freedom. And that has nothing to do with Tony Parsons. That's just a character. But what I am all it is, and I see that there's no one sitting there suffering. But you do see someone sitting here. I see a form, but I don't see a person. My words, an individual separate person. There is no such thing. Is this one of those situations of splitting hairs? No, absolutely not. This is a situation my, of describing, my is something, describing something that has no meeting with another concept. It's, it's describing something that is beyond understanding. It's not splitting hairs at all. No, but your, your form is the same form as the radiator or the wall behind you. We are all Thank made... Thank you very much. <laughs> we are all made of... Um, in one the stuff. Of the stuff. Stuff. Great words, stuff. Is, we all made of stuff. Gorgeous. But then, looking at you, you, you have one form and the radiator indeed has another form. But they are both only ones. Yeah, no, no, that, that, not that, one that, or the other is more significant. That I understand. I mean, the basis of you is atoms and the basis of the radiator is atoms. No, you're particularising. I mean, now you're talking science now. That's got nothing to do with this. Although, in a way, it sort of does point to it. Well, if you did, scientists, if you... scientists are now discovering that everything that arises comes out of nothing. Yeah, that's a, math that's a very complicated mathematical equation. About something that's utterly simple and obvious when there's no one looking. <laughs> that's the difficult bit. <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty that scientists have is that it's, it's very lovely and what they're discovering is very exciting, but they also say they're going to discover the source of life. But if one of them discovers the source of life, he won't be able to describe it to anybody else. Neither can I. 
So he won't be able to write a thesis in the whatever you call it, you know, and say the source of life is no thing because everybody will lock him up. Uh, a few, a few seconds ago, you you talk of before liberation. Just a bit nearer. Yeah. Before liberation, is there a before? No, there's no before and there's no, no. liberation. No, that's uh, well. But when, when, but when that which is nothing and everything communicates with that which yeah. thinks it's something then that which is nothing speaks in the language of something. One can strive to, uh, for uh, more money or more uh, food or uh, se over sex. It's more sex. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that is fut futile, futile. Call <laughs> fun, though. Uh, for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what is more uh, futile or superfluous than striving for liberation or awakening. It, it's already there. It's yes, I know, but what, in some way, subtly what you're doing is making it wrong, making the search wrong. Oh. I mean, there are some teachers that say it's stupid to search and that, you know. Yeah. That somehow makes it wrong and it's not wrong, it's defined, it's just what it is. Seeking is seeking for money yeah. and seeking for enlightenment are both the same thing. There's nothing wrong with them. That's what's happening. Hmm. But but if it is it is already there. Yeah. Not those are, they? that's well, those are words. Words. I use them too. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. But they don't get anywhere near. Oh. Oh yes, uh, I mean I can stand like, here and just say like, it's already, like there is only this, all there is is this all day, but yeah. probably not many people would come and I'd run out of a bloody room. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough it wouldn't be appropriate because somewhere in the search, from the seeker's point of view, there's a, yeah. a, a language and a questioning about this which is responded to out of nothing. Of course, in the end, the question's coming from nothing also. Yeah. But in some way or other, there's some <coughs> communication that goes on that points to that which is beyond the communication. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. There is, there is one ingredient in this meeting you've completely forgotten today. <laughs> ingredient? Oh, right. What's that? You haven't told us a joke yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually I've run out of jokes, but I, I, I told a joke on Friday evening and one yesterday, and it's only two every weekend, I ration it. <laughs> I'm, I'm try, I'll try and think of some old joke that you may not have heard. But... <laughs> you missed the good, some good jokes. I heard the one about St. Peter. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a Methodist <laughs> <laughs> and a priest and a Catholic priest and um, a rabbi in an aeroplane, a private aeroplane that was flying to somewhere. And they also had a, there was a choir, I think there was a choir boy there in the, they were going to somewhere, to some sort of service. And it was a private aeroplane, and the pilot came out to them and said, I'm really, really sorry, but in fact there's something wrong with the engine of the plane. You know, and it's going to crash in about ten minutes. And there are only two parachutes, and I've got one of them, and I'm jumping right now, so he jumped. And the Methodist, said, this is awful, there's only one parachute, who are we going to give it to? And what is the matter? Well, it's one of the A religion, it's a religion. And he said, I think we should give it to the young boy, he has his whole life ahead of him, you know, we should give the parachute to the young boy. And the, and the rabbi said, oh, fuck the young boy. And the Catholic said, well, have we got time? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
So the open secret is that there is no secret and the answer to life is that there is no answer. All there is is aliveness. All there is is this. Thank you.